How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killer. Welcome back to the Vigilant Villa. You'll remember in the last episode we learned about Claire and uh, John's relationship. How Claire is John's mistress and he wants that necklace back and he's a bit of a psycho. Also, as well as being super creepy and gross. Uh, we got George He's recollection of last night when Amy went missing. So, well, I don't know if we're much closer to finding out who the killer slash judger is. I remember I was reading. Emily returned early, together with Claire. What's going on here? Please help me get the medical kit. She's ill. My wife helped her find the medicine for stomachache. Claire's condition looks serious. Let me call Mr. Zhang. Don't. They just fought. I could hear in the room that it's two walls away. But there's, there's only Amy downstairs. Someone must be with Claire at that time, but I shouldn't stay there long. Stay with her, I'll go. You and John go on the next shift. Given your condition, I'll just take your place. They went downstairs when my wife was looking after Claire. Yeah. When I came downstairs, there was no one in the lobby. Amy wasn't there. I checked the time. It was around 11.45. Okay. That's just your testimony, though. There's no one to prove that. It was only 15 minutes away from the next shift. I thought she'd gone back to her room, so I didn't call her. Not long after I reached the lobby, the villa suddenly had a blackout. Now we can make sure that when Amy disappeared. Presumably between 12, 20, 11.25 and 11 whatever. You know. There are two clues about the time that can lock down the scope of Amy's CEO. Last time Claire and Amy saw, saw Amy in the villa and wasn't in the lobby at 11.45. Good. In between those two times. We can narrow the range down to within 11.25 to 11.45. Coincidentally, just after Amy was gone, the villa had a blackout. What happened during the blackout must be very important. The blackout didn't last long, only around 10 minutes or so. There was nothing around the villa. You could only see darkness during the blackout. Yesterday it was a sunny day. The moon was bright at night, or else we couldn't see anything for sure. During the blackout, Isaac came out once. A blackout? Let me check it first. It's better to be overload tripping. If the power fail if it's a power failure, we'll have much more trouble in the next few days. After he checked it out, he said it was just overload tripping. Then he left from the front door for the electrical room. Later Leo, who was locked up in the room, kept babbling. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Stop pretending that you can't hear me. I know there are people guarding outside. Since you know it, behave yourself. Is it a blackout? You people are so interesting. It's no use taking turns to guard me, because I didn't kill him. When he was arguing with me on the second floor, John asked me about the situation. What happened? A blackout? Isaac has gone to check it. Just wait a few more minutes. Then after two to three minutes, the power was restored. Then the song Tulip rang out at 12 o'clock. George was watching Leo on his own. Leo was watched by George. He didn't leave the room. He has provided much information, but there can still be missing important details. When did Isaac show up? How long did it take for Isaac to show up after the blackout? About two to three minutes. What happened during the blackout? Was there any ab anomaly after the blackout? After the song at 12, based on the shift table, John was with me to guard. We were there until 2, and then Isaac took our place. Then we found Amy was missing this morning. What caused it? Isaac frowns and starts thinking. Oh, we've got a lot of lot of deductions to get through. I want to know what happened after the blackout. There was only George left in the lobby. He doesn't look like someone who could solve such problems in daily life, so I helped check it out. There was a short circuit based on the water entering the junction of kitchen appliances. Ah. Then I entered the switch room and switched the power on. I went back to the villa after the lights were on. Nothing special. How did water get in the power outlets in the kitchen, though? The statement is short and clean. There must be important details that haven't been mentioned. Ask if there's something special in the electrical room. Is there anything special in the electrical room? He understands the suspicion behind the question. There's an aged lock on the door of the electrical room. You can break it with a stone. Could it be someone created the blackout while there were a few people in the lobby? The time of the blackout is too coincidental. It looks like it looks man-made. But if someone used the duration to cause a short when there were a few people in the lobby, there's something that doesn't make sense. 
the time of the blackout. Claire's stomach ache was an accident. The murderer didn't know that the lobby would be unguarded. Go to the kitchen. Unpredictable time and restrained movement. If someone wants to create a blackout and meanwhile overcome these two things, the easiest way is to use a time delay device. I'll expose this trick. Mm. Booze. Looks like a missing bottle from the wine cabinet. It was open and there's some water. This power brick, power brick? A plug board that can support high power electrical appliances. What is that thing? What is this? Check the fridge. Middle drill? Small ice tray. Top drill? Food. The vegetable crisper. <laughs> Large ice tray. But an ice cube is missing. That's a weird thing to notice. How perfect a fridge can you have? Every little slot has an ice cube in it. There's a cube of ice missing. So they use that to short the thing. They put the ice on it, waited for it to melt to short it out. Makes sense. Did any of you use an ice cube? Everyone shakes their heads. I know how he did it. The tools he used are... Oh, you click and drag. Oh, you have to put it in the middle? Put the cat. Oh my god. You frustrate me. I'm frustrated. First... Fill the wine bottle with water. Second... Chisel the ice to make a holder? That's a weird thing to do. Use the ice to fix the wine bottle. Put the device on the plug board. With the ice melting and the bottle tilting, water runs into the plug board and causes the short... You could just put a piece of ice on the plug board and walk away. That would be enough. It would just melt into it and then short circuit. It's not an elaborate time delay device. It's more like a last minute decision. Whether it's a time delay device or the murder weapon, they both look like a last minute decision. Who on earth wanted to kill Amy all of a sudden and why? Okay. Then everything seems to be back at the starting point. Only Isaac went out during the blackout. I went to the electrical room. The restored power is the evidence. You use the blackout to give yourself a rational excuse to go out. That also makes sense. You spent the time making a time delay device. That means... The murderer used the blackout to cover something up. He wanted to use the blackout to cover something up. If I was Isaac, even Daisy could be the first one to suspect him. What an effort he has made to lead the clues back to himself. Even I could be the first to suspect him. Daisy repeats what I said again in a low voice. Why do I feel it ain't a compliment? Mr. Fang, do you mean someone's alibi is fake? One of the alibis we believe has flaws. I was with Dr. Tong last night. I can test. We can testify for each other. Maybe I was disgusted by what John said last night. I suddenly had a stomachache. Mr. He left after Dr. Tong helped me get back to her room. I felt like my stomach was torn by someone's hands. I couldn't utter a word. I was suffering every second. At that time, the electricity was cut off. The French window was big enough to let the moonlight in. But the moonlight is cold. By the cold light, I saw Dr. Tong swallow a handful of tranquilizers. Do you have to eat that many? I can't sleep without tranquilizers. With what happened today, I'm afraid I'll have to double the dose if I want to sleep. Some food in the villa might have expired. I'll remind Amy tomorrow. Are you feeling any better? Yeah. We didn't say much after that. After a while, I saw Dr. Tong hold her head with her arms, shaking a bit and full asleep. I was a bit sleepy as well. Dimly, I saw the light come on again. I woke up in surprise and found out my pain was greatly relieved. Wake up. Dr. Tong opened her eyes in a daze. How do you feel? Much better. You should get some rest. I stood up and was ready to leave. I'd love to go anywhere except my own room. You can sleep here if you don't mind. Just sleep on it. I'll be alright tomorrow. Frankly, I didn't sleep well. I had nightmares all night. Ask about dream? What kind of nightmares? I dreamed that red blood flowed into a river and white bodies were piled up into a hill. I saw Jackie standing in that pile, his mouth open and shut as he talked to me. He seemed to be saying something, but he lost his tongue. All he did was make sounds. I couldn't hear him, so I left. 
Clear stares at a certain place, looking a bit lost in her own thoughts. I woke up from the nightmare with sweat streaming down my head. It took me a while to realise where I was. I checked the time subconsciously. A few past one o'clock, it's still early. Dr. Tong was asleep in peace. I didn't want to disturb her, because she's in peace. She took a handful of tranquilizers. So I stared blankly onto the bed for a while. Okay. Claire looks at me and shrugs. That's all. Need I say more? Someone has said it pretty well. Then just make it brief. What I did was simple. There's nothing to say about the first part. I fought with Claire. Then she left and I stayed in my room alone. I'm afraid you haven't fully realised what a sharp tongue Claire has. I was terribly angry, so I went to enjoy the view, listen to the opera and turn my beads to cheer myself up. After a while the lights went out. I didn't know what happened so I listened to the sounds from downstairs for a while. There was something happening downstairs but I couldn't hear it clearly. Five minutes later the lights were still off, so I asked in a loud voice, What's going on? Is there a blackout? I heard someone check it out, so all I could do was wait. Later the lights were back on. I checked the time, it was almost my shift, so I went down to the first floor. It happened to be 12 o'clock. Mr. He, Leo and Isaac can all testify I'm telling the truth. No other questions. Is it my turn? I ain't afraid when I'm with everyone, but I couldn't help thinking wildly when I'm alone. I've never stayed under the same roof with a dead body, so I was very nervous. Skip the feelings, Daisy, what'd you do? And did you notice anything strange? Okay. I hid in my blanket and tried to sleep. But the power was suddenly off. It made me more scared. You... I know what you want to say. Here's the point. I don't think it's a normal sudden blackout. It's like a horror movie. I tried to shut my eyes and sleep, but I did not close them. I became more sensitive once I closed my eyes. So I kept them open. Then I saw a human head slowly floating upwards from below. Don't come to me, Mr. Gia. After the human head floated away, the power is back on. After the recollection, Daisy seriously comes up with a conclusion. I think the blackout has something to do with Mr. Gia. That's all. I told you this villa is evil, but none of you believed me. Are you sure it's a human head? I did not see it carefully, but based on its shape, I think so. I've written down the clue. It's probably Isaac walking past your window. Everyone can testify for each other except Isaac. The atmosphere becomes more subtle. Tock, tock, tock. George knocks on the table again and again. Even there's a fake alibi, but unfortunately almost everyone has a second witness. Except you. Only Isaac and Daisy don't have second witnesses. Daisy's room has a tiny, a tiny tall window. She couldn't get out from that. Meanwhile, no one saw her pass the lobby. George shrugs. Then there's only one person left. Silence reigns, and the others turn to look at Isaac unconsciously. Do you still suspect me? We have no choice but to suspect you. I don't think we know you very well. We haven't seen your face under that mask. What does it have to do with my face? Of course it does. George suddenly raises his voice. Everyone turns their heads to look at him. If you happen to look like a wanted criminal, the case would be solved. Isaac doesn't retort. Apparently everyone else is on the same side except Isaac. Are you really just a truck driver? You make us feel like you're a beast. Very dangerous. Ha! <laughs> beast? The spearhead points to Isaac. It's indeed a chance to reveal the secret he's been hiding. Stay quiet. There's tension in the air. Isaac suddenly stands up. He bypasses the dining table and walks to George. George is about to stand up, but Isaac's big hands push him back into his seat. Everyone's nerves are tightened. Everyone's staring at what he's doing. Isaac bends over and lowers his voice like a ghost in the dark. Don't you want to see my face? Don't dodge. Isaac lifts his hand and pulls the mask off slowly. With the loud thunder, the rain seems like it's just got a signal to pour down. Under Isaac's elegant eyes and eyebrows is a horrible face. There are marks of burn or chemical erosion on his face. The skin on his chin crinkles like old people. <laughs> it's like there are a dozen millipedes crawling in his face. It's hideous. He doesn't even have lips, leaving white gums exposed. You... Have you seen it clearly? Isaac gets closer to George. George instinctively dodges backwards. He looks more suspicious now. Who knows how you ended up like this? Isaac thinks about it and then lifts his eyebrow carelessly. What do you think? How would I know? Didn't you just have an answer? Maybe that's it. Wanted criminal? John somehow goes behind Isaac. He seizes Isaac behind his, by his arms. Do it, I got him. Leo ignores John. Just watches his arms around his chest. George tries to control Isaac. 
The three of them start scuffling. They hit the table, the glass dropped. Its shards splashed. A thun thunder makes an even louder sound than the farce inside the house. Enough! An experiment will tell us if he's the murderer. Time is the key. There's five minutes enough for you to check the conditions of the villa. More or less. Alright, let's go with the electrical room. I'm looking for the electrical room, and he points out the direction. There, you'll see it later. Wait, it's unfair, there are only two of you, I'll go with you. No problem. Did you walk or run yesterday, Isaac? I ran. Alright, ready to count the time? Daisy nods seriously. Three, two, one. To calculate the time accurately, I endure the pain of my bursting lungs and finally run to the electrical room. The aged lock is useless. I check my watch, panting. Isaac glimpses at me. He frowns and enters the electrical room, simulating what he did last night. If he's the murderer, he'll get to... the edge of the cliff. Now I need you to run to that cliff behind the villa. I hark hard take any strenuous exercise. I feel like it'll fall out any time. The time that the murderer needs to go to the cliff, it's recorded. Did you walk or run back to the villa? Walk. Wonderful. Well, how long did it take? 35 minutes. Realizing the blackout and checking the situation inside the villa needs about 5 minutes. Going from the villa to the electrical room needs 5 minutes. Switching the power on needs 2 minutes. In total, it's around 12 minutes. If Isaac's a murderer, it took him 23 minutes to return to the villa with the empty lobby after the villa's lights went back on, meaning he came back at around 12.20. Is that right, Mr. Heath? He didn't leave for that long. So he still needs to run for 30 minutes unless he directly goes to the cliff from the villa. But you said he left from the front door. That means he'd have to take another round to the route. That's not enough time. From this angle, he didn't have enough time to conduct the crime, unless he found new evidence. I can testify the time for Isaac Chen. Go on then. Do it, Leo. Two minutes past midnight. I heard another voice after the song ended. Goodness, the song is really annoying. John pushed my door open. After confirming I was still there, he shut the door. Well, well, aren't you mighty? My hands and legs are tied up. Are you still afraid that I'll fly away? Huh? Why are you here, Mr. Heat? Where's Claire? Your wife has a stomachache. Emily took her to her room. Oh, okay. You don't know the shitty things between me and Claire. Sorry about that, Mr. Heat. No problem. I'll stay up if you want to. I'm going to sleep first. No one answered me. When I left the door and went back to the bed, I heard them talking again. What caused the blackout? The overload tripping. He went back and... About a few past twelve? Ah. Okay, he didn't have enough time to commit the crime. Leo's words further proved that Isaac hadn't the sufficient time for the crime. You should thank me, you almost became the one being tied up tonight. Isaac doesn't say anything. If Isaac didn't do it, and we didn't do it, could the murderer be the 11th person? I'd prefer... yes. I definitely prefer yes. Maybe, currently, none of us seem to have the time to conduct the crime. It's getting late. Let's go back to our rooms. Claire stands up and goes upstairs. John gets up and follows her. Bang! The door slams one after the other. Then comes the sound of furniture moving against the door. Huh? Who the hell do they want to keep out? Bad guys. I didn't mean you. I should go back. Then a loud sound of furniture moving against the door comes from Daisy's room. I've had enough. Leo goes back to his room and slams the door. I stand up and then ask Isaac, pretending that I asked it inadvertently. Alright, oh, the electric room of this villa is special. It's far from the villa and secluded. If you didn't help me, it would take a while to find it. But how do you know where it is? He's only been here twice, but he knows where the electrical room is? I looked around the first time I came here. Is that a problem? No worries, it just came to me. Good night. I sit before my desk and try to organize these messy clothes, but my hands can't stop shaking. I take out my medicine. I exercise too much today. I close my notebook and put it back on the shelf. My fingers halt and start looking for, as expected, another copy of the number game is at the corner shelf. Code again. Caesar cipher. Alright. The key of the Caesar cipher is the shift number. You can find the shift pattern by checking the two vertical groups of black letters. Code again. So, hang on, let me just work this out if I can. Decipher. The answer is this one. 
Damn it, I almost forgot to take my medicine. Take the usual dose. Now it's time to verify the answers. To the lounge. The lights in the lounge are off. It's so quiet and empty that you can only hear the wind roaring outside the window. The sky is dark as if completely covered with a curtain. In front of the bookshelf, Jaith. Row J, the eighth book. Mask Villa. A card and two photos again. A normal card, but the information on it seems to hint at something. The photo was taken on the street. It looks like a taxi driver. It's us. The photo was taken in the restaurant. I look like a waiter. I widen my eyes, staring at the photos. My head hurts like being torn up as breathing. It's not me, it's impossible. Oh, what the hell? I'm a detective novelist, I... I know what you really are. I know what you really are. The sentence is like a spell that keeps hovering inside my head. The space becomes unreal and twisted. Beep. The TV beside me turns itself on. It's broadcasting news. Next, let's pay attention to a piece of social news. A guest house has a fire hazard, and a sudden fire broke out. Eight lodgers die in the fire. Only one was rescued. The person is still under medical inspection. What's that smell? It sounds like something's burning. I turn around. The curtain, the painting, the ground. Fire is burning everywhere. Fire! <laughs> the bookshelf behind me collapses. Suddenly a burning creature staggers toward me. I keep picking up books to smash it. It's murmuring something. Foams! 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 The voice is like a life-saving straw to clutch at, but I can't reach it. My body stiffens and I can only hear that voice fading away. The burning creatures keep showing up, throwing themselves at me. I cast my last glance at the blood. Red. Full moon. Hanging in the sky. How can the moon be blood red? My entire body suffers from burning pain and... I can feel the medicine in my veins cooling me down. Okay, again, I didn't take enough pills. Now it's time to verify the answer. Alright. Cranking up the pills. The lights in the lounge are off. It's so quiet and empty that you can only hear the wind roaring outside the window. The sky is dark. Okay, yeah. We'll skip ahead of this and hopefully we won't die this time. It's not me, it's impossible. Here we go. I know what you really are. The TV beside me turns itself on. House fire. Eight lodges died. It smells like burning. Escape the villa. The bookshelf behind me collapses. Suddenly burning creatures stagger towards me. A scream. I feel like a curtain lifted from my eyes. Everything becomes clear. The lounge is empty with no fire. The TV's turned off. And the person I attacked is Daisy. She comes out to check. Her hands cover her face. There's blood running through her fingers. She's hurt. I'm truly sorry. How are you? I'm okay. What happened to you? My condition's getting worse. Maybe I'll be treated like a psycho. I don't know how to reply, but Daisy seems to have realized something. You were sleepwalking, weren't you? Let me see your face. Daisy moves her hands off her face. A part of her skin has turned red, but there's no wound. I look at her hands again. There's no blood either. An illusion again. I'm okay. You scared me. Go to sleep now. Remember to lock your door. Okay. Oh my god, we are actually legit crazy. Clutching my chest in agony, I gradually fall to the ground by the door. My heart pain relieves a bit. I don't know how long my body will hold on. I must solve the mysteries. On the edge of the cliff, Amy left an important trace that can help us confirm the murderer's sex. The fact that she's the biggest uh, female? The... Right? Wasn't that it? The trace of dragging, right? Yeah. The murderer could keep the dead under control and restrain the dead completely while the dead struggled with full strength. Amy is tall and slim. Emily, Claire, and Daisy are all shorter than Amy, so they couldn't keep her under control. That means the murderer is a male. The dead changed their clothes and made up her own on her and makeup on their own initiative, indicating that she did want to mourn for someone. But if I want to mourn for someone, I'd pay close attention to the time. I'm about to leave the villa before 12, but one clue doesn't fit that hypothesis. Okay. What clue is that exactly? 
To hold a memorial ceremony for someone important, Amy would leave the villa alone. Correct. Oh, the time schedule. She's always with someone, but Amy scheduled herself before 12 on her own initiative. The reason she managed to leave the villa before 12 was due to an accident. Claire had a summer cake, and then Emily helped her get back to the room. That gave Amy the chance to leave. And who is she burning ghost money for? Does that have anything to do with the potassium cyanide she prepared? If she wanted to murder someone, there must be a prerequisite. She was the person... She was sure that person would come to the villa. Then the eligible people are... Okay. But Amy didn't know John and Claire had booked the villa. It's Isaac. But Isaac wouldn't kill Amy because... He didn't know who the fuck she was, really? Because he'd only just started here? Between Isaac and John, which is the clue that can reduce Isaac's suspicion? That one. He didn't have enough time to commit the crime. Then there's only John left. More than one person could testify that John was in the villa during the blackout. Then let's see this from the murderer's perspective. The murderer is clever enough to use a time delay device, but leave many traces if it gets exposed. Based on the speed of the ice melting, the murderer was sure the person he wanted to kill would come out during 11.30 to 12 o'clock. And based on the shift table, I can rule out Emily. Her shift was before 12, so she didn't have time to commit the crime. Claire had a stomachache, and she went to the room with Emily. Both George and Emily can testify that. Wait, if the person he wanted to kill could move freely during 11.30 to 12, then it's more likely that the people who are scheduled after 12. It's possible that Amy wasn't the one the murderer wanted to kill. It's possible. Even if people lie, there's a slim chance that three people can lie at the same time. George talked to John and Leo, and he'd seen Isaac. He's off the hook for now. Similarly, Leo, who was talking to George, was tied up the whole time. Can be excluded as well. These two again. Isaac didn't have enough time to commit the crime unless he ran from the villa to the cliff directly. In that case, John is the prime suspect. But he has an alibi. There's a problem with John's movement. Movement inside his room. No? Only his voice appeared during the blackout, but no one saw him in person. Could it be he couldn't open the door because he wasn't in the room in the first place? He had enough time to run from the villa to the cliff and return. But he was on the second floor. I look outside the window and there's no light under the dark clouds. All you can see is darkness. Our guest is right. Our guest is right. The murderer made the blackout to cover something up. But to cover what? There's a movement. Because I'm a neighbour who doesn't like close like to close the curtains. You mean he climbed down through the window to the second floor in the dark? It's not hard for him. Remember the climbing knot John made for Leo? He knows how to climb. There's a clue that can prove that. That's right, he did do something for the knot, didn't he? If John returned to the second floor from the first floor climbing, that's why she saw a head floating. It was his head, wasn't it? I knew it would have been someone's head. I'm afraid the human head that Daisy saw was John's shadow after his killing. When John rushed back at 12, he went downstairs and guarded with George. He killed a person in just 10 minutes. I need more evidence to, prov to prove my deduction. The rain outside the window is restless. What a rainy season. Is it a coincidence we gather here or we walked into a trap unconsciously? Why did the person let me come here? What's the reason? Why is this person re what is this person's relation with these people? The medicine starts working. Sleepiness sweeps over me. Tomorrow is a new unknown. Day 4 in Tulip Villa. The relationship between people is like a rubber band that is constantly being pulled back with more and more tension. The trust might collapse any time. Here is like a sealed glass bottle. People inside the bottle can see the outside world, but they're destined to be unable to break out of it. And with that, chapter 4 is done. Chapter 5, Nightmares. We're going to wrap this one up here, obviously because we are out of time. But today we've been at it for quite some time. I thought I'd broken the game, but I'm glad I haven't. Because we're still having a good time. And we will come back to this in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I'll see you in the next episode.